class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing the Sharks 2023 NHL Draft Preview. And before we get into it, it should be noted that the Sharks do have two first-round picks in this year's draft, their own first-rounder, as well as that belonging to the New Jersey Devils from the Timo Meyer trade. But the Devils are still involved in the ongoing NHL playoffs, and as such, their pick has not really been locked down just yet. Could be anywhere from the mid to 20s to late 20s to even in the 30s depending on how things go and so in the coming weeks we'll have to circle back onto that one to see who the Sharks could draft in that particular position but right now for the purpose of this video we will be solely focusing on the Sharks own pick which has been decided yesterday at the NHL draft lottery the Sharks came in with the fourth best odds some of their best odds that they have had in many many years but unfortunately, the Sharks would not end up winning the draft lottery. Instead, it would be the third best odds Chicago Blackhawks jumping up to first overall, bumping the Ducks and the Blue Jackets down to second and third, respectively, and so keeping the Sharks in the exact same position. Of course, this is a disappointment. I'm sure every Sharks fan in the entire universe was holding their breath as Bill Daly began to reveal the fourth card to see who would be fourth, and we're hoping that they would reveal the Chicago Blackhawks, showing that the Sharks will have have won at least second overall in the draft lottery but from a glass half full perspective from an optimistic look keeping that fourth overall spot and not dropping to fifth or even sixth overall is a pretty big win for the San Jose Sharks and I will tell you why because it is not just the fact that obviously you don't want to move down in any draft ever but in this specific draft year keeping that fourth overall spot is massive moving into the actual draft in the coming months and this is because in this draft it is quite unique in the fact that there's a pretty set top five in terms of players compared to usual drafts there is usually a lot of movement outside of the maybe first one or two players usually like a first overall pick is set though as soon just as recently as last year we know that's not always the case but past the first couple of picks there is a lot of movement I will remind you of the 2021 draft when the Sharks drafted William Eklund at seventh overall I were I was looking at mock drafts that had him indeed as late as seventh overall but also at sixth at fifth even at fourth overall potentially higher than that so there can definitely be a lot of movement but if you were to check pretty much every single mock, mock draft for this year's draft, you'll likely find the same exact five players uh, littering the top five of those mock drafts with only a one slight exception because you might be thinking well if it's a top five of players why was it so important for the Sharks to lock down fourth and that is because of the player Matvey Michkov from Russia a prospect who it feels as though we've been hearing about for many years now when you hear about a prospect outside of their draft year it clearly shows that they are a, an extremely elite and special talent I remember hearing about Mishkov a couple of years back at the same time where you really started hearing about Connor Bedard, the 15-year-old phenoms. And it felt as though, you know, in the early parts that it was a question of whether it would be Bedard first or Mishkov first, certainly hearkening back to the times of Ovechkin and Crosby, even though, of course, those two players were drafted in different drafts. They were kind of the comparison a lot of the time those many years ago. But as time has worn on, Mishkov has kind of dropped a bit in the draft stock, still retaining a top five spot because of just how great he is, but losing it because of the circumstances outside of his actual game. And the major reason is, is that he's currently in the KHL and signed on a KHL contract, which will keep him there until the end of the 25-26 season. That is over three years from now. He would only really be coming at a minimum to the NHL for the 26-27 season. And that is not necessarily even a guarantee in itself. It is always a wonder whether these Russian players would be able to come over. And while they frequently do, you know, and sometimes the draft stock will happen and they'll drop in the standings and then player that player will eventually come over and then that team who drafted him will say, why didn't you draft him earlier on? And it's always that sort of mistake being made. Imagine with Kaprizov of the Minnesota Wild is really the primary example as of late. But with Mishkov being such a highly touted pick and potentially being drafted very, very early on in this draft... Picking him with your third overall pick, you're usually going to get a very good player at third overall. So picking someone who technically has an opportunity of literally never arriving at your team 
is definitely a massive risk. So the fact that there is a top five of players and the Sharks are fourth overall pick means that they will have the luxury of actually either choosing Mishkov if they want to play that patient card or going with one of the other top five players. If they had had fifth overall pick like the Montreal Canadiens do, the Canadiens could end up in a tough spot where they will either have to choose Mishkov to try and get that extremely skilled prospect but someone who they won't see for the next three years or to pick outside of that elite top five group. And so when it comes to Mishkov, he is an incredibly skilled player. He very well may end up being at the very least the second best player coming out of this draft. Never know, maybe even the first best. It's technically possible, but it is definitely a risk and a test of patience. When it comes for whether or not I would want the Sharks to actually make that choice, honestly, I don't necessarily think the Sharks should go for Mishkov. Even in a situation where the remaining player in that top five is, let's say, 80% or 90% as skilled as Mishkov, I would take him just for the safety as well as the not having to wait so many years for him to actually come over to the NHL. If it was a larger difference in terms of potential, sure, Mishkov could be worth the risk, but I don't think the Sharks should go for that. So I imagine if they have the opportunity, they will pass on him. Now, when it comes to the other three players, these are the three players that round out the top five. Of course, I don't have Connor Bedard on the board because he is almost certainly going to be going first overall. And in some crazy universe where the Chicago Blackhawks feel bad for having moved up from third to first and decide to just draft, let's say, Adam Vantilli and Connor Bedard drops down from one, the Anaheim Ducks would be very stupid to not draft him there. So there is zero chance that he ends up in a Shane Wright situation and drops all the way to fourth overall. So no reason to put him on this board. A player next who also likely won't drop, but there is definitely a bit of a higher chance. That is Adam Fantilli. He'll likely go second overall. That seems to be the prediction, but you never know technically. If the Anaheim Ducks decide to make a bold move and draft, let's say, a Will Smith or potentially, more likely, a Matvey Mishkov at second overall, it's possible that the Blue Jackets will have Leo Carlson on their mind and he'll be their guy, and so Fantilli could very well end up being the Sharks' pick at fourth overall. That's certainly a possibility, so something to talk about for sure. Fantilli had a fantastic year this past season in the NCAA, was actually a Hobie Baker winner as a freshman in college, which is extremely impressive and extremely rare to see as well. Played with Team Canada at the under 20 world juniors this past season and while he was of course overshadowed by the elite performance of Connor Bedard at over three points per game he still had a relatively solid tournament and would make any team happy picking him at second overall and if the Sharks could somehow steal him at fourth they would also be very happy with that and the big thing is is that Fintilly is likely ready to play at the NHL so he would be able to jump in and immediately make an impact as soon as this upcoming season. Past Fantilli, as we get into maybe the more realistic options for the San Jose Sharks, we have Leo Carlson. And one of the big things here from Leo Carlson is that he is a Swedish player. And if we go by the San Jose Sharks draft history of the past couple of years, they seem to be fans of the Swedish players. Their first round pick in 2022 was Philip Bystedt out of Sweden. And their first round pick in 2021 was William Eklund out of Sweden. And also one of their early second round picks in 2022 as well picked up in the trade down from the 11th overall was Matthias Havlid. Guess what? He's also from Sweden. So clearly there is some trust with the Swedish scouting staff for the San Jose Sharks. So if Leo Carlson is available, he would likely be someone that the Sharks would absolutely love to pick up. A two-way center, putting up very impressive numbers in the top Swedish league, the SHL. Very similar point-per-game output to what William Eklund had, but maybe even a slight edge over Eklund because of that two-way game that he does play. Obviously, you always like to have that high, high high-scoring player. You look at Connor McDavid currently leading the NHL as the best player in the entire world. But then you also look at players like Bergeron or like Andre Kopitar, players who have won the Selkie Trophy as the best defensive forward in the NHL and yet still also put up a very hefty amount of points. And, you know, this might be sort of cherry-picking stat, but players like Kopitar, like Bergeron, they have Stanley Cups, which McDavid is still trying to work towards in his career. So that two-way game is incredibly, incredibly valued, especially in the playoffs. So Leo Carlson could be someone who 
who the Sharks would absolutely love to have and maybe even have a sort of Swedish connection with their current top prospect, William Eklund. So, would for sure be a very good choice and the final one on this list would be will smith now unlike the three previous players as well as connor bedard it felt as though early early on in this draft cycle you heard a lot about fantilly about mishkov about bedard even about leo carlson will smith was someone who kind of had to work his way up over the entirety of this past season but he has absolutely bursted into the top five to the point where he may not even be available at fourth overall theoretically the could take Fantilli and the Blue Jackets might very well be very high on Will Smith and so they'll take him at third. He was a player who absolutely dominated in the under uh 18 World Juniors with the United States. Fantastic player for them. Likely their MVP was driving that top line and one of the best lines in the entire tournament, if not the best line. He was also extremely good with the U.S. National Development Team Camp. I believe was, you know, setting records or coming very close to records set by previous first overall pick with the New Jersey Devils, Jack Hughes, and we know how good Jack Hughes currently is at the NHL level. So even in a situation where indeed Fantilli and Carlson are gone and the Sharks have to make that choice between Mishkov or Smith at four, Smith would still be an extremely strong choice. The major issue, if you want to call it that, with Will Smith is that unlike Fantilli and even potentially Carlson, who are both likely ready to play in the NHL as soon as next year. I believe Will Smith has committed to Boston College for the next season, so it is unlikely that he would be playing with the San Jose Sharks next year, which is, of course, not necessarily super exciting for a fourth overall pick but if you have to wait a year to get an elite player in the following season after that that is a sacrifice that I'm willing to make of course since the other option picking Mishkov you'll have to wait double that amount of time so a fantastic choice Will Smith would be the thing about the Sharks actually being fourth overall is that besides the choice between either drafting Mishkov or not they don't really get to choose otherwise in a situation where Mishkov is available at four and the Sharks don't want to take him they're basically just taking whoever is the best player left available so they're not necessarily making much of a choice unless Mishkov actually goes in the top three which is why it is still a slight disappointment that the Sharks obviously didn't end up at least second overall obviously the major disappointment not getting first but second overall certainly a slight disappointment still as well but in the end the fact is at fourth overall in this specific 2023 draft the Sharks should end up with a player with elite potential and hopefully that player ends up immediately being someone who the Sharks can rely on to play well and helping this slowly but surely rebuilding San Jose Sharks squad get to where they need to be to eventually start competing for a Stanley Cup within the next few years. Class dismissed.